Hello, this is Jane Goodall, and I'd like to tell you a very special story. This story begins in the Congo, in the heart of Africa, home to many chimpanzees. But that home, those forests, and the animals that live there are in danger. Forests are disappearing as logging companies make new roads to cut more trees, and those roads make it easier for poachers to get to the habitat of wild animals. Year after year, poachers hunt chimpanzees and steal their babies. The young chimpanzees are then sold as pets or trafficked illegally to other countries to become circus attractions. Some babies are rescued by the authorities who persecute the illegal wildlife trafficking. But what to do with these babies? They cannot just be returned to the jungle because young chimpanzees need their mothers until they're at least five years old. She is the center of their universe. In order to care for orphaned babies, the Jane Goodall Institute has built the largest rescue center for chimpanzees in Africa, Chimpunga. A place of hope and the beginning of a long road towards their freedom. This is the story of an amazing chimpanzee named Wunda. Her name for the locals means close to death. Wunda was wounded by the same bullet that killed her mother. When she arrived at Chimpunga, few of those looking at her thought she could survive. For weeks, the workers at our rehabilitation center took care of her night and day so that someone was always by her side. The little chimp, frightened, had to learn to trust individuals of the same species that had taken her from her mother. Every night, Wunda woke up screaming between nightmares, with screams that tore at your soul. The soothing voice of her caregiver and a caress soothed the baby until she fell asleep again. After many caresses, the nightmares disappeared. For the first time since being separated from her mother by poachers, Wunda felt loved. She started playing with other Chimpunga babies. She learned to climb branches and fall under the proud gaze of her caretakers. And little by little, she began interacting with older chimpanzees and learning the rules of the group. While still young, Wunda met Rebecca, a Spanish veterinarian who had just arrived at the sanctuary and who would be crucial to Wunda's life and to this story. Since the time they met, they were always together. But as Wunda and her group grew stronger and stronger, each year new orphan chimpanzees arrived at the center. History repeated itself over and over. Soon, the rehabilitation center was running out of space to care for so many orphans. We needed to be able to release some chimpanzees. But where? After a long time searching for a safe place, the Congolese government gave the Jane Goodall Institute three islands on the Quilu River. A perfect environment, free of external threats, to our chimpanzees. Wunda was one of the first chimpanzees chosen to go to the islands. But Wunda's life wasn't easy. Sometime later, while Rebecca was in Spain, Wunda fell seriously ill. Prostrate, unable to move, her bones were protruding all over her body. She was on the brink of death. The caretakers at the center tried everything but Wunda didn't improve. 
desperate they called Rebecca. And from the other side of the world, she explained to them over the phone how to perform a procedure that had never been done in Africa before, a chimp-to-chimp blood transfusion. Rebecca returned to Chimpunga and was not separated from Wunda for a long time. Wunda recovered and became an even more confident female. It was time to release her and introduce her to the chimpanzees that already inhabited the islands. The journey to their new home took a whole day. Wunda traveled in a special cage. She could feel the excitement of Rebecca and Fernando, our wonderful videographer, and the rest of the staff of the Jane Goodall Institute. I was on that boat. That day was the first time I met Wunda. Through the bars, I spoke to her and tried to reassure her. She looked around her, clearly wondering where she was going. We finally reached the island of Chinzula. I will never forget what happened next. Onto the island, and the caretakers carefully opened the door. Wunda came out. She seemed puzzled. Wunda turned and climbed on top of the cage. She sat and looked around her. One of her caregivers patted her head. I was there standing by the cage. Rebecca was on the other side. Wunda turned her head and looked around curiously. She suddenly looked at me, came over and embraced me. That embrace lasted a long time. Trust me, chimps don't normally hug each other for so long. Wunda finally let go of me, climbed down off the cage and walked off towards an opening in the forest. That embrace reminded me that we're all connected to other living beings and that we have a responsibility to protect them. Don't forget that every day, through our actions, each one of us can make a difference. Today, Wunda is the dominant female chimpanzee in her group. And to our complete amazement, about a year after being released, she gave birth to a baby. His name is Hope. This is what he represents for all of us, for them and all the rescued orphans. This is, without a doubt, a second chance. <laughs>